Hey everyone, let's start this video with an example. So let's say we have this set of simultaneous equations. So because you're dealing with x, y, and z, therefore it's the h1 and h2 math syllabus. So you can use your GC to solve, the, solve this, right? So if x plus y plus z equals to 2, and then x, 3x plus 6y plus 4z equals to 3, lastly 5x plus 8y plus 6z equals to 7, all right? So because you can use your GC, you should actually indicate that you're going to use your GC. Now what you'll see in your, your graphing calculator will be this, right? For the older versions, you will see x1 equals to 3 minus 2 over 3 x3. Then you see x2 equals to minus 1 minus 1 over 3 x3. And then comically, you see x3 equals to x3. All right, for the newer GCs, you see something like something like x, y, and z. All right, but it should be the same thing, right? Now, what you notice is that all your answers now include x3, right? There's no definitive answer, right? You see x1 has minus 2 over 3 x3, x2 equals to minus 1 over 3 x3. Then you have, you know, quite funnily, x3 equals x3. So what this means is that your answer is now infinite, right? You notice that x3 can be anything and x1 and x2 would change accordingly. So what this means is that your answer now has a, or rather your answer now have a common parameter therefore we're looking at parametric answers for this video all right so what do you mean by parametric answers basically where you have a common parameter across your variables right so in this case let's say when we use a gc we end up having x equals to 3 minus 2 over 3 x3 x2 equals to minus 1 minus 1 over 3 x3 and then x3 over x3 so instead of maybe putting uh x3 as x3, we can use x3 equals to t, right? So we can then change this to x3 equals to t. Obviously, x3 will be z, so what we can do is using the GC, we let z equals to t. Then what we have is we have x equals to 3 minus 2 over 3 t, and then y equals to minus 1 over minus 1 over 3 times y, sorry, times t. Then from here, right, this is basically your answer. Right, you notice that you have an infinite number of answers because t can be any real number. Therefore, if t is any real number, x equals to 3 minus 2 over t3 will also be almost every real number. y equals to minus 1 minus 1 over 3 times t will also be any real number. So it actually depends on the uh, parameter that you put in. All right? So if z equals to, let's say, 5, x equals to be 3 minus 10 over 3, y equals to minus 1 minus 5 over 3, and so on and so forth. So it, this example just shows you that, you know, not necessarily you end up with a, you know, a unique solution, right? So unique solution being just one solution. So unique solution, one solution, all right? Whereas this is a non-unique solution because there's multiple, in fact, infinite number of solution. Therefore, this is not a unique solution. It's still a solution after all, you notice that it's basically just a line, right? If you're going to express it in the vector form, it's a line, all right? But let's move into linear algebra, which is not part of your syllabus, all right? So this is actually quite important. This parametric answer is quite important because if you're going to look at some contextual uh, questions, like your application questions, you might need to actually be careful of the, of the value you put in for a parameter, all right? So sometimes let's say x, y, and z must be whole numbers. Let's say you have this solution, t must be a multiple of three. And in this case, must be negative 3 or whatsoever, all right? So just take note of the context of the question. Otherwise, you know, fairly simple topic, right? Very simple answer. Uh, it's really nothing much. Just use your GC. Yeah, so there we have it. The parametric answers for our system of equations, simultaneous equations.